Hey guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about collecting physical media on a budget. Because the biggest complaint I hear from a lot of people online is that streaming is just cheaper. Streaming is actually a better option because you save money. Well, I disagree. I'm going to show you today, for a $100 budget, what you can get. Now this is based on my own collecting habits. I have a book of stuff that I write down every cost of. Now this is from about 2021. I have a book for Blu-rays that go back to 2020. I started keeping costs of DVD from about 2021. So this is my own collecting experiences, what I got for 100 in terms of collecting. And this is just DVD. So let's look at the player first. If you want to get a brand new player, a brand new DVD player fresh in the box from the factory. I've searched around the websites and I found that Big W has that for $37. Now, it's a laser DVD player. Some people prefer laser DVD players. Some people say they're not too good. But either way, laser DVD player, brand new from the factory. And I believe that is a region free player as well because I have a few laser players and they are all region, region free. That's $37. And that is a big part of your budget. Obviously the player is gonna be the biggest part. Now, if you're willing to go the second hand route, if you're willing to go down the path of, hey, don't really need brand new, wouldn't mind getting one from the salvos or whatever, you can save a few dollars there, you can probably save $20, maybe even. You can probably get one for about 20 bucks, is what I'm saying. But we're going brand new. Let's say for brand new for that DVD player, we want to get the best hardware, we want the best laser in there, no issues with the player, just straight out of the box, ready to go. That's $37, and I have not cheaped out on that. I've went for the cheapest player, but I have not cheaped out on like going secondhand. I have went the more expensive route. Obviously, it's the cheapest of the DVD players I can get. But, you know, you can search down old players, like even a PlayStation 2 or something. There's other things to look if you want to get into that. Now, obviously, that leaves us $63 to play with. That is not a lot. A lot of people would say, yeah, well, you know, for my Netflix and all that, it would cost me probably about $90 a month, $100 a month if I got Disney, Amazon, Netflix, all the big players. It'd be maybe around $100 a month. Or give or take. So I want to show you some movies you can actually get for that price. And these are my own experiences. I got all of these for, they're a dollar each. And I, I've got 22 of them here. So let's pick these up. There's some there, some DVDs. There's about however many there. I don't know if you can see that. And there's another bunch there. Let's put all them on top of each other. Bang, pile them up. That's 22 DVDs. And if you want to see what's in them, that's all of them there. I don't know if you can see that in frame. But they're going to be in on the shelf here, so you're not going to really see them all the way to the bottom. That's 22 DVDs. I got them at about a dollar each. So give or take, some may have came to $1.35, some may have came to $0.80, cents, some may have came to $0.50. Cents. So all up, I've calculated in my book, that's $22 worth. So with those 22 movies out of there, that leaves us with $41 to play with. Now, obviously, you're not going to be watching non-stop movies. Maybe that's not your forte. Maybe that's not the way you want to go. <laughs> so I've accounted for TV series as well. A few popular TV series. Let's start with, uh, what do we have here? Did I put them down here? We'll start with a couple of popular ones. Let's start with Yu-Gi-Oh. I got Yu-Gi-Oh brand new from a Sanity store when it was shutting down. And when I'm talking about stores shutting down, there's a lot of places getting out of physical media. If you're in America, you might find a Best Buy or Walmart is starting to clear their collections if they haven't already. You can find places that are shutting down or getting out of the physical media game, getting brand new stock for pretty cheap. I got Yu-Gi-Oh! Season 1 about two years ago, $13, Season 1 of Yu-Gi-Oh! That's a good price. And Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, I got that for $13 as well. I mean, obviously, this goes for a bit cheaper now on sale. You can probably get this for about maybe six, seven bucks at JB Hi-Fi brand new when the sale happens. You can even get like two for 20 or something on these sort of ones. But when I bought it, I paid 13. So I'm counting what I paid for it. Fresh Princess Bel-Air season one, $13. Then I also got a box set when Big W was shutting down. And this is a brand new box set, Rugrats season one and two. This was $4. I got... The first two seasons of Rugrats for $4. Now, people might say, oh, but that's a bit childish. That's a bit whatever. Well, what if you just want something for the kids' room? What if you just want something to put on when the kids are running around and you want to get them down and say, hey, uh, we don't want to pay for Disney, but 
you might want to put on Rugrats. Maybe that's something you want to watch. Maybe that's something you want to put on. Maybe you're like me and you grew up on Rugrats and you just want to re-experience your childhood. There's Rugrats right there. That was $4 for that when Big W was getting out of Blu-ray and DVD. So I, I picked that up pretty cheap. And I'm talking about you can get in, you can get into the DVD format for really cheap. Now obviously you've noticed there's a bit of um, $11 left over. And I went to a Salvos shop, a Salvation Army that is. Um, and I picked up The Sopranos Season 1 and 2. Now the difference between these two and the ones that are on Blu-rays is these have the original music on them. Now obviously music was changed in The Sopranos. I didn't know this until after the fact. I heard about it. Um, I thought that, you know, in that scene where uh, Junior becomes the boss, they changed the music to that. Um, initially it was not the uh, exhibit music. It wasn't um, uh, paparazzi. It had been changed for the Blu-ray and DVD and re-airings and all that. But in the original, the original DVD, that has different music. These two in particular have different music to what's out there. So these are essentially erased copies of The Sopranos. And I got them for about 11, both seasons. So one was five and two was six. And that's $100 right there. You get 22 movies, two seasons of Rugrats, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, uh, one season of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, I should say. One season of Yu-Gi-Oh! Two seasons of The Sopranos. That's $100 with the player. And people might say, oh, I can still download hard drives full of movies. Well, for a one terabyte hard drive in Australia, and I'm talking about mechanical hard drive, the cheapest I can find is about $79, $80 at Kmart. And that's not even a great drive. And yeah, you can say USBs or whatever. Yeah, the price makes sense if you look at it as like, oh, I have it already. I have the internet already. I have VPNs already to download all this stuff. I have all this other stuff. But if you don't, this is actually a way better way for a normal person to get into it who's not tech savvy, who wants to download, who doesn't want to download a million things and use up their internet connection and doesn't know where to even start with that. This is a way better way to do it for a lot of people. And a lot of people will also say like, hey, Monkey Bone's a pretty good movie. I don't think that's even got a Blu-ray release. Now, people might say, oh, but I can get that on the bay for free and put it on a hard drive. Ha ha ha. Well, yeah, that's always a concern of the studios as well. You can get movies online for free. We know. We, we were all there during LimeWire. We were, or a lot of us were there during LimeWire. But, you know, we all understand that this is another method that people take to get things unofficially. But with this, you're getting the official copy, so you can feel a good little thing saying that, hey, someone actually bought this back in the day. Money went back to the studio. Money went back to Brendan Fraser, you know? You can look at it that way. And I know people will say, hey, DVD is outdated. DVD is blah. DVD is this and that. Well, if your budget permits, if you go, if you're willing to go a bit extra, like, you can get a DVD, a Blu-ray player, actually. You can get a Blu-ray player like the PlayStation 3. Like, you can see a few PlayStation 3s going out for, like, $100. You can up the player and get the PlayStation 3 with a Blu-ray player built in for $100 and go that way. Or you can get a brand new Blu-ray player for about $100. It's your choice. And then you can go the Blu-ray route, which you can get some Blu-rays for $3 a piece, maybe even $2 a piece, depending on where you look. Or if you time it, if you time it and wait for a sale, you can even get in pretty cheap as well. So there is no reason why physical media is so expensive, other than you want the most expensive thing on the shelf. That's the big thing. If you're going up saying, I need to get um, Walkabout, but it's a Criterion, so it's going to be a bit extra. It's going to be too expensive. Oh, that's so expensive. I'll just stream it. Well, yeah, obviously it's going to be more expensive if you're going for a niche label. They have to pay they, they have to pay their staff. They don't have the production of a Warner Brothers. They don't have the production of a Sony. Criterion uses other people's printing presses. They don't have their own, at least to my understanding. So you can... Of course, that's going to be a bit more niche, a bit harder, but they also restore a lot of things themselves. So they're doing a lot of the hard work that the studios aren't doing. So of course, a niche Blu-ray or a niche DVD is going to cost you more. But if you're just going into a shop, like you can see in here, I've got a few Cameron movies. I've got Titanic, The Abyss, True Lies. And some people will even say that in, on these three, some people will even say that these versions are better. Like, especially with True Lies and The Abyss, people were not happy with digital noise reduction. Now obviously the Abyss, I don't mind the noise reduction. The True Lies copy on 4K is a bit waxy. I do agree that the DNR has been a bit overdone on that. But you know, people still say the DVD is nothing to, nothing to laugh at. It is still a great copy of the movie. You can still watch the movie and it's still, it's still cooking, you know, it's still great. It's still a movie you can watch 
accessible for a dollar. I'm just saying, these are all pre-owned by the way. A lot of these are pre-owned except for Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Rugrats, and Yu-Gi-Oh. So all of them DVDs are pre-owned. Let me clarify. So I got a lot of them at the Salvation Army. I also got a lot of them at places like uh, up shops and like um, pawn brokers and that. Like they, you know, they will, you sell the DVDs and they'll sell them out for like a dollar a piece. Sometimes even cheaper. I got some of them for 50 cents. So, you, learn, you know, at the end of the day, you're essentially trying to save money. And maybe you don't have a great internet connection to download all your movies. Maybe you don't have a great internet connection to get all those get all those massive streams. Maybe you just want standard definition streams, which is not an option. It's starting to go away with ad tiers. Like, Netflix has introduced the cheapest plan on Netflix. You get the ad supported tier, and it is, I believe, $6.99, $7.99, but it's got ads. Now, obviously, DVDs have some trailers before it. You may get an ad or two before the movie even starts, but during playback, you don't see any of that. So, yeah, that is what I'm talking about when I talk about it's not as expensive as people make it out to be. It's not as expensive as people online say, hey, it is not that expensive. Some people online, the biggest argument against physical media is that it's expensive. I don't even want to touch it because it's expensive. It takes up space. Now, see, if you are one of those people, I would recommend against this because I've made the mistake. But it, if you just wanted to have a collection, also, they have pretty cool inserts as well. You can also, um, yeah, I won't go down the rabbit hole, but yeah, if you wanted to put this in a binder, and so what a binder is, is one of those DVD sleeves, meaning you can pretty much get rid of the case and just put it in a sleeve. You can probably store about 50 of these in a case. Make sure that you protect it, though, because I've had a lot of DVDs. My old collection gets scratched when I put them in binders. That's why I'll never go back to binders. But you know what I'm talking about? You can get a whole collection of movies for less than $100 or right on $100. By comparison, you're probably paying about $500 at least a year for all your streaming services. So one part of that could be something that's completely offline. Now, I have chosen to go with DVD for this video because... A lot of people are just like, I don't want to replace streaming. I don't want to replace what's there. I just really want it there if streaming goes down, if the internet goes down, if something like that hurricane that's hit America, I, my thoughts are with you in America, if you've been affected by that hurricane. Um, yeah, I heard North Carolina and a lot of that were pretty affected by that hurricane and some of the southern states. So um, yeah, my thoughts are with you guys over there. Um, but you know, if a hurricane comes in, the first thing that's going to be restored is power and um, like the sewer grid, power, water, a lot of the grids are going to be restored first. Internet can stay down for a couple of weeks. Like no one is rushing to restore the internet. Like people obviously need the internet. Don't get me wrong. People need the internet. But it's not an essential thing for everyday life. It's not water. It's not food. It's not power to keep warm in the house. It's not stuff like that. It's not an, a necessity. It's not essential in the eyes of emergency services. So you could be without an, an, uh, an internet connection for many months on end. That's something that's a very real possibility in a disaster scenario. So you might just want to say, hey, the power's probably going to be restored first. I just want a few DVDs just in case something happens. And I know that's like doomsday's talk. I know it's not always going to happen. But as we've seen, hurricanes can happen. It can be a, an effect. It can be a knock-on effect. And we need to look at it as this is a... This is a safety net. It's not going to replace streaming. It's not going to replace your options. I choose to use this more often than streaming. I will say I'm more, pref my preference me will go towards like Blu-rays, DVDs, and so on, 4Ks and whatever. But maybe you just want it as a compliment. Maybe you just like, really like The Sopranos and you know, if the power ever goes down, you can always rewatch The Sopranos. Maybe you're just a big fan of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, even though everything that's come out about Will, <laughs> with um, the whole uh, Academy Awards thing and then so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, maybe you're just a big fan of Fresh Prince Bel-Air. You know you can always go back and watch it. Keep it in your collection. Like, you know, if you can get it cheap enough. Like, I've seen that going secondhand. Obviously, I bought this brand new, which is why it was a bit more expensive. But if you get that secondhand, you can probably get it for about a couple of dollars, maybe $5 at most. So you need to look at it as timing when you buy and also 
you know, shop at op shops, shop at Goodwill, shop at the Salvation Army, Salvos as we call it in Australia. So I know some people were confused when I was saying Salvos. That's the Salvation Army shop. That's their line of what they call it in Australia, the Salvos. And Vinnie's is St. Vincent de Paul. That's another charity. And when I say Vinnie's, St. Vincent de Paul is what I mean. So, you know, you can also shop at Vinnie's, you know. Um, there's a lot of shops that will get into physical media and will sell it to you pretty cheap. I am a big shopper of the Salvos. I believe in the Salvos. Now, obviously, I've mentioned in the past that I have a few standoffs with some shops, but that never affects my overall support of the Salvos. I think what they do is a good job. And, you know, some stores think they're retail and think they are JB Hi-Fi when you walk in. But that's not every shop. A lot of salvage stores understand that it's charity and understand that it's about helping people at the end of the day. And hey, it helps me by having a Blu-ray, a DVD and Blu-ray collection. It helps them by having money to go to people in need. So, and it's all donations at the end of the day. So also when you buy these, just take them off. Usually the cases will be open. You can just take it out and have a quick look and say, hey, uh, yeah, I'm okay with that. If it's got a lot of scratches, I would probably steer clear of it. But that's how I do it. I just look at the disc and say, okay, the disc is looking good. That should play. I'm happy with that. So that's a cheap way to get into physical media collecting. That is $100 that I've showed you in this video. 22 movies. Let me grab these. Let me pick them up. 22 movies. Both two se first two seasons of The Sopranos. Yu-Gi-Oh! and Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and The Rugrats' first two seasons. All of that for $100 with the player. So you can't say, oh, but the player... And I know people are going to say, but the TV. <laughs> yeah, well, obviously most people have a TV. And if you don't have a TV, then I can't help you with that. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you can probably get a cheap TV at places like op shops for $50 anyway. So you can add that into your cost as well. If you don't have a TV, you can do that as well. Like no, no harm about that. If you need a, DV, a TV, because I know some people in the comments are going to be like, but you do not, you didn't account for the TV. Ha ha ha. Your energy cost. Ha ha ha. Of course, energy cost is going to be a, thing in any thing, even with downloading from the internet. Unless you go into like Maccas and using that or something. Maccas meaning McDonald's. But yeah, this is a cheap way to get into the format and get into physical media collecting. And if you want to do it on a budget, this is a cheap way to do it on a budget. If you don't want to go and spend thousands on collecting like a lot of us do, this is how you do it. And yeah, obviously I've got a lot of things here. Some, some I have two copies of. Like I know uh, Nick Reacts did a reaction to my DVD is still king in 2023. Love you, Nick. <laughs> but yeah, these are two editions of Napoleon Dynamite. This one is just an older version, probably the release version. This version is a special edition with an extra disc in there. So that's why I've got two discs of that. And you know, some of these, I would have got them for a couple of dollars a piece as well, like one, one, two dollars a piece. So I was like, you're not cheap enough to add both copies. I'll have both copies. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that with collecting Collect because you love it, not because you're trying to compete with anyone. And I'm not a fan of knocking other YouTubers. I mean, everyone's trying to do their own thing. Everyone's trying to essentially push physical media and trying to show why it's so great. But I believe in, sorry if I'm a bit, um, if I sound a bit off, I have got a bit of the flu at the moment. Um, but you know, if you're looking at this and you might say, oh, well, that bookshelf right there, like here are bookcases, how do I do that? You don't have to keep it in IKEA bookcases. I'm just saying, you can you can make up your own things to keep your DVDs in. They don't have to go in bookcases. They can actually go in drawers under your bed or whatever. You, you know, you can put them in drawers. You can stock them away in binders, however you want to do it. There are so many options to collecting in physical media and getting started that there's really no reason why it is a bad thing to go towards. Now, obviously, people will say, I can do it. I can have all that on a hard drive for whatever. Well, hard drives cost money. And you could probably get a hard drive, and yes, you could probably put a few more on that hard drive than you could this. I will agree with that. But in the end of the day, like, this is something that is a throwback, and it's something that I can own my favorites and have them accessible. Now, I've, see, I've showed True Lies, that right there. I've got the 4K over here, so if I'm going to watch the 4K, I'm going to go towards the 4K, and I have moved this around, so where did I put it? <laughs> I have moved this around, guys, so I've done a big rearrangement, so I don't actually know where True Lies is. Oh, there it is. I've found it. Yeah, when you... This is the thing with physical media collectors. We constantly rearrange our collections, and then, yeah, we struggle to find things when we move them around because we go to our usual places. It's habit, and then you change it, and it's like, oh, okay, where did I actually put it? <laughs> so, yeah, I've got the 4K of True Lies. Now, obviously, I don't... There are... To an extent, I'm happy with the 4K, 
but there is DNR done. So I keep the DVD around and you know, I, it's cheap enough to keep it around. It only takes a space of one DVD and same with the Abyss. It doesn't take much space and I can have the choice of what, are, what on what night, what I want to watch. The version without DNR, the release version, the closer to the release, or the new 4K that'll look beautiful on a 4K TV, a bit with some, um, with some digital noise reduction done and some changes. So yeah, let me know what you think. Like, are you a fan of DVD? Tell me some of the things of your collecting habits. Tell me what you love about collecting. And I'll get back to you in the next one. Peace.